NBA 2K18, Forza 7, Shadow of War, and WWE 2K18, what do all of these recent games have in common? Well, it's a major single player component and microtransactions. Now the types of purchases you can make in these games varies, but the idea that you can or must pay to win or pay to make solid progress has pissed off quite a few gamers, and it got me thinking, have I ever paid for something in game other than for DLC expansions? The answer is no, and it is simply because I'm cheap and these microtransactions have never seemed like a great deal. However, I have used the currency that could have been purchased in two somewhat recent games, Let It Die, which is free to play, and Guitar Hero Live, which is not free to play, but I received a free $10 voucher by mistake, and the video for that can be found deep in my YouTube from years ago. I was very close to giving Let It Die money, but I didn't. You earned enough through playing, but even then it was so finite I felt it was inevitable, and I stopped playing entirely instead of paying. And I love Guitar Hero Live, but I never would have purchased the currency. It gives you a fair amount for free, and it only affected the online portion. And that's the difference. The microtransactions and the games I listed at the start are heavily integrated into the single player, and that's rubbing players the wrong way. But why is Breath of the Wild behind me? We're going to use it as a thought experiment in just a second. So people are up in arms about these microtransactions, but what's wrong with them? Is it the microtransactions themselves, or how, are, or how they are implemented? I'll be the first to tell you that I don't care about any of these games for reasons that have nothing to do with the microtransactions, so I won't go into specifically what they're doing wrong. However, there's a strong trend, and things are likely to continue and possibly get worse. To consider this in a broader fashion, I'm going to outline some hypothetical microtransactions for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now this will assume some knowledge of Breath of the Wild, but considering it's one of the biggest games of the year, I think, I think that's fine. Let's start that with one that wouldn't be entirely intrusive, and then the very small tweaks that would make it lean towards egregious. There are over 900 Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild, and the game doesn't mark them on the gigantic map. But what if it did? A simple microtransaction could be to reveal the location of 1, 10, or 100 Korok seeds on this map. You'd have to go and find them though. So what if it's 3 bucks? I'll get to find 50 Korok seeds, right? A key thing to note here, this functionality doesn't exist in the game. There's no way to have undiscovered Korok seeds be marked on the map. Even if there was, this would exist as an optional thing for completionists. And it, However, it could easily not be that. Uh, imagine playing Breath of the Wild and getting to one of the four divine beasts and the game telling you, hey Link, you need to have 300 Korok seeds to access this area. This gate would abruptly halt progress and would exist for several reasons, but in this instance it becomes predatory, especially if there is then a prompt asking for money to reveal these Korok seed locations. You need X number of stars to access new parts of the castle at Mario 64, but it's not quite like this. Most people aren't going to find 300 Korok seeds without playing for 50 plus hours. And what if you needed 800 to get into Hyrule Castle? This slope is hella slippery, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. Amiibo already exist in the game as kind of loot boxes that can be redeemed once per day. What if you could buy them in game as well? Not to mention how some people already aren't fans of this Amiibo functionality, for the very loot box nature that they are. What if Guardian Beasts had a shrine completion requirement? What if you could purchase weapon slots? What if those weapon slots weren't permanent? What if you could pay for a rupee multiplier? How many slots does your stable have for horses? And these are off the top of my head, but you get the point. And as soon as you let these ideas into the game, even if they are obtainable through normal means, Things change. You no longer live in a world where every player needs 13 hearts to get the Master Sword, and that means at least 40 shrines have been completed through a lot of discovery in the open world. You'd then live in a world where Player X did it the traditional way, and Player Y bought the locations of these shrines, could teleport directly to them, and get the sword right away. And as soon as a player can do that, design decisions around enemy difficulty change as well as many other aspects. The butterfly effect is huge from that one simple alteration. In making up all of these possibilities, it should become apparent how free Breath of the Wild is, how contrary to its very nature as a single player RPG these choices would be. 
Devs can say they playtested the game with microtransactions off, but the very notion that they are available to the player changes the psychology of those players. If you were stuck on a boss in Bloodborne, but knew you could pay a dollar to skip it, would you? It certainly would cross your mind, and I bet people would give in much more quickly than if the option didn't exist. And that completely changes the game from how the designer implements features to how the player interacts with it on almost every level. And I think cosmetic things are fine, but you know, some pretty outfits, that's great. Grinding for them isn't the end of the world. However, as soon as game progress, as player stats, as completion is tied, however loosely, to microtransactions, everything changes. And the loud reaction gamers have been having to these decisions of late should be a strong signal to developers and publishers, especially when it's for features that used to be free or used to be an in-game currency that was doled out at a reasonable rate before. This change hasn't been sudden, but it's definitely coming to a head now and we need to come to terms with two things. One, if you don't want it, don't buy it. Send a strong message that these choices suck. Don't buy the game entirely if that's how you want to do it. And two, these microtransactions will continue. We must be aware of this. Just one whale replaces many people who would refuse to buy the game. This practice will remain, but we have to be vocal as to how it should change. Microtransactions and single player games can coexist, but we have to push back until it is something reasonable and doesn't affect how people play the game in the first place. Until it isn't something that feels like a modern game shark code. Until it isn't experience boosts that feel mandatory to pass arbitrary progress halting gates. Then and only then will the world be at peace. But I think we still have a long way to go and this is really only the beginning. And I have no idea what the fuck's going on outside. I don't know if you, I probably can't hear it. But there's some yakadoos wibbling and wobbling around. No, let's be silent all day. But as soon as Ben does his dumb show that no one watches, Let's make a noise. That's what it is. So that's my opinion on that. But we're going to move on to the actual topics of the week in just a second. And I'm going to go outside and maybe kill one of those people in the meantime. <laughs> 